Shifting focus to the Israel-Hamas war, over 26,000 Palestinians have lost their lives since the Israel-Hamas conflict began. Israeli forces have stepped up attacks in southern Gaza, forcing thousands to flee the neighborhood. Hundreds of Palestinians are trapped in two hospitals in Khan Yunus as Israeli troops encircled Gaza's second largest city. UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron met Israeli Prime Minister in Jerusalem and highlighted the importance of a two-state solution. Qatar has accused Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu of deliberately obstructing a ceasefire and hostage release negotiations. This after Netanyahu allegedly criticized Qatar's mediation efforts. Meanwhile, Yemeni uh, Houthi rebels fired missiles at merchant ships off the Yemen coast. In retaliation, the U.S. and British forces carried out joint strikes aimed at Houthi military targets. To take this forward, we are now joined by Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, spokesperson of the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, Colonel Lerner, let me begin by asking you, currently the offensive by Israel is focused on southern Gaza. What is the Israeli forces actually looking at at this juncture in terms of the immediate objective? Uh, and how long will this operation continue? Thank you. The IDF is continuing its operations, broadening the scope in the south of uh, the Gaza Strip, particularly in the area of Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is Gaza's second largest city and indeed the birthplace of Hamas's leader, uh, Yechia Sinwar, who is, um, feels very, very much at home in Khan Yunus. What we found just in the uh, operations over the last few weeks is the extensive, expansive, and probably the most expensive uh, construction project, project ever to take place in the Gaza Strip, namely the subterranean tunnel system that Hamas had held over 20 uh, hostages in over the course of this war. And indeed, we are moving our operations forward in order to dismantle and destroy and effectively crush Hamas as a governing authority of the Gaza Strip, we understand that they cannot be trusted with the powers of government because with the powers of government, they build a terrorist army that came into our bedrooms, uh, butchered our babies, our women, our men, our elderly, and abducted to over 240 of them into Gaza. So we are on our route in order to dismantle and destroy Hamas and bring home the hostages. Right. Uh, as this war rages on, it's already been 110 days uh, and many experts and countries want to know what will be the trajectory of this war and what will it take to bring it to an end. So what is the stated objective currently, uh, Peter, Peter Lerner? Uh, you know, the world has perhaps very little patience, but unfortunately, um, the reality is one that Hamas have been planning for this day for over 16 years. So there is no quick fix to dismantling their terrorist infra infrastructure. There is no quick fix in dismantling and destroying their operational capabilities. Uh, we are moving forward. We are dismantling and destroying each and every tunnel that we run into, the places where they have hidden, the places where they've established their command and control capabilities. Um, the war will be over once they have been removed from the governing capability of Hamas, where they will no longer be able to organize terrorist attacks and, and, and conduct an onslaught that we experienced on the 7th of October. Um, the second component of our war effort is to bring home the hostages. And indeed, there are two trajectories that could be uh, pursued in this, in this regard. First of all, obviously, the diplomatic effort that you mentioned in the opening. And obviously, we are trying to create operational and intelligence uh, capabilities to bring home the hostages as well. So I would say those all of, all of the components of our goals of this war, they work hand in hand and they are a combined effort. Um, we are determined to change the paradigm once and for all to make the south of, the, of Israel, but also beyond the south of Israel, safe and secure for all of the people living in the region. All right, uh, Peter Lerner, thank you very much for joining us on the program, telling us about Israel's latest offensive against the Hamas and uh, what could be the potential response from Israel depending on the ICJ verdict. We're taking a short break here on the program. Up next, our focus on West Asia tensions continues. We catch up with John Bolton, former U.S. Uh, National Security Advisor under the Trump administration. We speak to him about the trajectory of this war in the Middle East and the way it's spreading and also the possibility of things, of geopolitics, if Donald Trump returns as president.